जय भारत जननी तनुजाते जय हे कर्नाटक मत इट मीन्स विक्ट्री टू द डॉटर ऑफ मदर इंडिया विक्ट्री टू द मदर कर्नाटक रिटन बाय द ग्रेटेस्ट कन्नडा पोएट ऑफ ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी कुवेम्पू इट इज परहैप्स सजेस्टिव ऑफ अ नैशनल इमेजिनेशन ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स दट कर्नाटक हैज ऑलवेज चेरिश्ड वाइल पॉलिटिक्स इन द अदर स्टेट्स ऑफ द साउथ इंडिया अक्वायर्ड अ स्ट्रॉग रीजनल मैनिफेस्टेशन बट इन कर्नाटक The reliance has been on the national parties starting from the Congress and the BJP and of course on the caste factor. Well it's a widely acclaimed thing that there have been a paradigm shift in the Karnataka politics since the Bommai government has taken charge. There has been a pressure from the right wing groups on different politico administrative decisions and an element of hindutva involved in it. But one thing is common and crucial in all political turnarounds that we have been witnessing the region of coastal Karnataka. From the hijab issue to the murder of Praveen Nataru or even before that coastal Karnataka has always had a role in Kannada politics on the lines of how Nandi Gram is crucial for West Bengal Ayodhya or Gorakhpur for Uttar Pradesh and Nagpur for Maharashtra how has the role of this region evolved and what have been the key develop and how is it relevant from today's political scenario let us find this out in this video don't forget to subscribe to news hamster and press the bell icon In the 1970s the issue ailing the region of coastal Karnataka was that of the exploitation of the small farmers by the rich zamindars. The then ruling government Congress took up the matter and stood in support of the small farmers. They introduced the land reforms. When this was introduced the most important issue for political play was put to an end. Now using the advantage of the reforms the Muslims that formed a major chunk of the population started to migrate to the Gulf region. in the backdrop of the oil boom that took place in gulf this not just created a religious disparity between the two communities but also a sense of economic disparity and since there was no burning issue for political play this was taken up by the right wing organizations as the major issue and the villain now was the muslims who acted as a fine alternative to the oppressive zamindars this was a source reason for the issues that rise up out of nowhere in the region of coastal karnataka This also exposed a lot of Muslim youth to the hardline Islamist ideologies putting them on collision course with the right wing nationalists. The Indian Mujahideen a terrorist organization was set up in 2005 by Bhatkal brothers who hail from the coastal Karnataka region. In the later years the PFI and the SDPI would set up roots in the young Muslims of the area. All these factors led to strong communal polarization resulting in the strengthening the foothold of the BJP in the region and of course the ascendance of the BJP has also emboldened the fringe hindutva outfits sufficiently enough to openly go about spreading their agenda from the 1992 dakshin kannada riots to 2006 mangaluru riots to 2017 uttar karnataka riots the region began to be strangely named as the hindutva laboratory of south india suresh bhat b member of karnataka communal harmony forum and people union for civil liberties mangaluru has reported that the coastal karnataka has witnessed 120 communal incidents in 2021 the highest in 4 years during 2020 when the pandemic had brought the country to a grinding halt the total number of communal incidents was at its peak at 110 which included the incidents of cattle vigilantism hate speech among others but's data not only includes available local media reports it is likely that there could be more unreported cases he reports if you think that the issue of goraksha love jihad hijab are new they have been age old issues for dakshin kannada region suresh bhat has also tracked communal crimes in dakshin kannada and urupi since 2010 the rise of the rss has also led to the rise of the divisive politics as reported by mr bhat he says that the brick collection drive for ram temple and even the rath yatra has sparked communal flares in karnataka around this time the rss in the coastal karnataka also consciously started to change its image as an exclusive organization for god saraswat brahmins instead they actively wooed youngsters from the marginalized tulu speaking communities like the bilava community the mogavira community and the ediga community this was retaliated to by the muslim side using organizations like the karnataka forum for dignity and the unpopular popular front of india but how is it becoming relevant now targeting the muslims over the issues like wearing the hijab to government schools boycott of halal meat and economic boycott of muslim communities doing businesses around temples have been trending in karnataka of late Most of these prominent issues have started from the region of coastal Karnataka. The net result has been a series of killings in which youth from both communities have lost their lives over the past few months. The communally flared up atmosphere in Karnataka is expected to influence the outcome of the assembly polls due in May 2023. 
Karnataka which sends 28 members to the Lok Sabha is a major state that will witness a fierce battle between the ruling BJP and the opposition Congress which also enjoys a robust presence. But both of them are nationalistic parties where JDS which is a regional party does not enjoy the same amount of likeness or presence as these parties do. With the relevance of the stalwart leader Yadurappa coming down, BJP cannot possibly rely on the caste votes. Hence it's playing its top game of Hindutva which has worked out in its favor in the regions of Uttar Pradesh, Assam and now even in Karnataka. For this Hindutva card to pan out well, the region of coastal Karnataka including Dakshin Kannada, Udupi and Mangaluru has become its laboratory. Will this work in the favor of the BJP in the coming elections? Has the tide changed or has it influenced the minds of the forward thinking people of Karnataka? Do write to us in the comment section or share your thoughts if you have something else to say. Don't forget to subscribe to News Hamster. Thank you so much for watching and look forward for more such content ahead.